Good morning, family. Thank you all so much for joining us on day two of our Morning to You revival, where we are talking about the precious things of heaven. Amen. Amen. We will lift up our voices together and bless the name of the Lord. Let's appreciate him for an opportunity to be part of a brand new day. Let us pray. If you can pray in tongues, please do so. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful this Father, morning. Bless your name this morning. Bless in your kindness. I want to say thank you, Lord, for who you are. Yes. Thank you for every opportunity to gather in your presence. We say thank, thank you for keeping us, Lord, throughout the night. And we slept without the consciousness of what was happening around us. Be your name. Have been with us, Lord. It's Hanarabasu. So get us from the darkness of the night. Give us a sound sleep. Sota. When it was time, Lord, for us to wake up and play for these activities, you gave us, Lord, the grace to wake up. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Father, because there's no one like you. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Mighty Jehovah is your name. We give you thanks, O oh glorious God. For your good and your love and just forever. We give you thanks this morning because it pleads you to send your son to redeem us from the, 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 the tricks of the evil one, from the bondage of the wicked one. Lord, we bless you. Predestination to adopt us into your family. Oh, Lord, our Father, this man that you are mindful of. Oh, Lord, our God, you are so mindful of every detail concerning our lives. Father, we celebrate you. Say glory be to your name, O Lord. Glory be to your name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We ask, Lord, that this day you gather us and gather our descendants. Okay. Gather all, O oh Lord, that you've made available to us from the foundation of the world. Let them come from the north, from the west, Lord. Let them come from the south and from the east. Oh Lord, even those that voluntarily wandered in all directions, that we ask that you gather and bring back. So we are crying to you, Lord. Oh, crying to you this morning, asking that you hear our voice. Mm -hmm. Crying to you, Lord, as we as we deal with the challenges, the floodgates. We are crying to you. We know that as we cry, you deliver us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only you, Amen. Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you because we have come to Mount Zion. Yes, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Lord, we thank you because we have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. We have come to you, Father, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Father, we say thank you because we are encompassed by such a great cloud of, of witnesses. Therefore, we are encouraged because we know that we move as a multitude. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Beloved, before we get started, I would like for us to have either a bottle of water with us, a cup of water, pure water with us, and also have your communing elements ready. We will partake in communion at the end of um, the teaching. So we're going to get started immediately. I believe that we were blessed by yesterday's um, message. Um, for those who are not part, I really encourage you to listen because we are building upon the principles that we laid yesterday. Amen. Amen. We left off yesterday saying that um, God the Father is Alpha Omega. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, he created the fiery waters, and then the spirit moved upon the surface of the waters. So he began the world with water. He began with water. And in Revelations 22, we are told that 
There was a river of water flowing um, from the throne of heaven. So we said the prophetic act will be for us to um, daily begin with water and end with water. Why? Because we are children, we are spirit beings, we are the children of God and we are spirit beings. He produced after his kind. Our father is spirit, so therefore we are spirit. So we, we, we are emulating him. Amen. So Amen. with a bottle of water or a cup of water, I want us to just carry out that prophetic act together. Let's begin with water and, uh, of course, end the day with water. And we remember that the spirit hovers upon the waters. And we said that there was never a time when um, God created water. It existed from the very beginning and he separated the waters. Amen. So the same spirit that hovered on the waters that are in heaven are the same, is the same spirit that hovers on the water that is here on earth. Once we adopt that spiritual mindset, we begin to see water very differently very differently is very spiritual amen amen so with that being said let's get into today today's message just carry out the act by yourself oh let's do it together i just drank do well to drink as well yeah. yeah so yesterday i began to meditate and just preparing for today and uh, the lord was speaking to me a lot a lot like i literally had to close my computer <laughs> to pause on everything that he was saying. It was just so much to download at the same time. As we get into today's teaching, I want to give us a transitional text that came alive to me yesterday. Amen. Amen. Now look at this. Do not read too quickly. Amen. Just, just follow from the beginning. Ephesians 5, 18. Sorry, 22. I said 18, something. Somebody help me correct that. It says, do not get drunk on wine. Amen. Why should help me correct this, please? I don't know if it's 18 or 22. There's a typo. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. The word debauchery is asotia, meaning unsavedness or wastefulness. In other words, the Bible is saying that if when we drink wine and get drunk on wine, what we are doing is that we are demonstrating wastefulness. So we are being encouraged not to get drunk on wine. Amen. Which leads Amen. to... Amen. 18. 18. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me for that. So he says that we shouldn't get drunk on wine, which leads to the bokri. Wastefulness. Instead, be filled with the spirit. And then it continues by saying that once we're filled with the spirit, we begin to sing in hymns, psalms, and all of those things, joyful songs to one another. So the Holy Spirit just ministered to me so powerfully. Like he told me to take a very close look at this particular portion of scripture. Look at it, meditate on it, think through. It's talking about drinking. He says that you cannot get drunk with wine if you haven't drank or drank of, drunk of the wine. Amen. You get of wine, um, with wine because you drank wine maybe to excess and then it leads you to waste it leads a person to wastefulness then in the same vein he said when we um when, when we think about being filled with the spirit most often we think about being filled with the spirit by speaking in tongues and he says that that is not the only way that you get filled um, with the spirit he said drinking water is one of the ways that we get filled with the spirit. Because we keep singing, out of our bellies shall flow um, mm -hmm. of waters. I, I guess we're thinking that the belly is symbolic. No, it's this belly, this belly that you have, you and I have. In the Hebrew, it's actually belly. So the rivers of water flow from within us. Remember, Jesus Christ continued by saying that he was speaking about the spirits. Amen. So mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to say that, you know what? We get filled with the Spirit by speaking in tongues, but we equally get filled by, with the Spirit by drinking water. Why? Because of the understanding that we received yesterday. The Spirit of God hovers upon the waters. Amen. So mm -hmm. when we drink of this physical water, 
we are drinking of the Spirit as well. Amen. Anybody catch that? Yeah. Amen. I had never seen it that way, and I just went to bed celebrating him. Amen. Amen. So let's speak in tongues to be filled with the Spirit, but also drink water. Amen. To be filled Amen. with the Spirit. And we're going to see why even more. Because he began to speak to me about the spiritual dangers of dehydration. The reason why when you cast out the spirit, the first place that it thinks of going to is a dry place. If you and I are evicted from our houses, you will not think of going to the desert first. You wouldn't because it just doesn't make sense. Why would you choose an arid region to dwell in you even consider a dry place but that's what the enemy considers or demons consider first when they are casted out of a person amen so we can be the spirit by speaking in tongues and by drinking water as well may we never see water the same the spirit of god hovers relaxes upon the water amen amen, amen. that's powerful now, I want to speak to us. That was a transitional text based on a prophetic act from yesterday and what we just carried out this morning. Prophetic acts are powerful. It's a demonstration of faith. Now, I want to speak to us about dwelling places. Now, the content and atmosphere of the dwelling place of demons. Like I just um, spoke to us, when, uh, when we cast out a, a, the demon from us, amen, or from a person, mm -hmm first of all, considers a dry place to go to. Now, the Bible tells us that when we, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I'll return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first state. So shall it be with this wicked generation. Here's what I'm saying. If you and I are evicted from our houses, we will not consider a dry place or a desert as the first place to go and dwell in. Amen. Amen. We will have other considerations. But for the devil... Or demons, that's exactly what they consider first. Amen. Amen. May somebody help me again with this. I'm sure this is from Matthew, but I didn't get the chapter right, um, typed out. Amen. Okay, so have that in mind, the contents and the atmosphere of the dwelling place of demons. Why was a dry place the first choice of habitation? I want us to ask ourselves the, the question. From dryness to dryness and back to dryness. Why do I say that? The only way or one of the ways that the enemy or the demons will find it comfortable to live in our lives is because we are either dry spiritually or we are dry physically. Meaning we are void of the word of God, which is the water of the, which is water. Or physically we are, we are dry from physical um, water. So the enemy lives dwells in this dry place when it's casted out it goes to a dry place or it goes through a dry place and gathers many more many of its kind and uh, comes back again into that dry place to invade it amen so that's the reason mm. why it's like from dryness to dryness and back to dryness the dry places in this verse is referring to a location however if we apply the principle of the text it equally refers to a dry life Amen. Dehydration attracts attracts demons. Amen. Dehydration mm -hmm. attracts demons. May we avoid being dehydrated. Thank you, Matthew 12. May we avoid being dehydrated. Now, a showerless body attracts demons. People who don't take showers often, we are creating an, a breeding ground for the enemy. For, the, for demons to come and dwell. Because when we don't take showers, what happens is our bodies become dry. And that's exactly what they are looking for, that kind of environment. Amen. Amen. It's 
void of holy of holy spirit activities attracts demonic activities a spiritual life void of holy spirit activities attracts demonic activities in our lives there, there has to be some form of activity in the spirit going on it's either godly or ungodly amen but if we amen. are on the godly side then we are attracting the holy spirit activities but on the ungodly side, we are attracting demonic activities. So yes, this is Matthew 12, 43 to 45. Thank you. Now, he continued to speak. The body of depressed people are breeding grounds for demonic habitation and activities. If anyone has taken care of a depressed person, lived with a depressed person, or have personally experienced depression, you realize that that lifestyle is always associated with, you know, not taking showers because they are too weak to do it, and not eating, not drinking. You know, they are always avoiding the sources of water. And they look cranky. As a result, they deprive mm -hmm. water internally and externally. They're not eating or drinking, which are sources of water. Neither are they taking showers. It's like a double whammy. Amen. So what happens mm -hmm. is that their, 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 their bodies become the breeding ground for demonic activity activities. Because if we would just take a shower and just drink water, we have at least introduced the spirit and the water into our lives. That's a good starting place to build upon and, and, and uh, continue the deliverance process out of this depression. If you know anybody or if you have um, depression, water is a good place to start. Amen. Amen. While the content and the atmosphere of the, the dwelling place of demons is dry, it's arid, it's a desert, the Lord is interested in seeing us associate with water at different levels. What is he interested in? He's interested in our um, hydration. Um, Ephesians 5, 25 to 26, the Bible says this, um, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her, the washing of water by the word. Amen. The washing of water by the word. Not the drying, but the washing. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 10, 22 says that, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. Here I said that most people attest that they hear the voice of God best when they take baths or showers. Most That's people. Right. Amen. But Amen. why? Because the spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Amen. We are interacting with the spirit at a physical level. Amen. Amen. Most of us fall in the category where we sing a lot in the showers, even those who have the worst voices ever in the showers, they sing and sing. I mean, there's such inspiration under the shower or while taking a bath. Amen. Because it is very spiritual. Taking a bath is a spiritual activity. If we would just recognize that the spirit hovers over water. But there is more to this text, which I'm not going to delve very deep into today. It says, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, full trust in him. In other words, that is a disposition or that should be the disposition of anyone who enters the presence of God. Sin our hearts must be sincere, trusting him fully. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. Two things here that I want us to keep with us until the Lord permits us to share more on this. There are two ways to take care of a guilty conscience. The first way, let me backtrack. Even after giving, uh, uh, accepting Jesus Christ, believing the message of salvation and the kingdom, what happens is that most kingdom citizens still suffer from guilty consciences. 
Now, the Bible um, prescribes for us two ways to take care of guilty consciences after believing. The first way is by applying the blood, recognizing the blood of Jesus Christ. The second way is to take a shower, to take baths, to take spiritual baths, take a bath with pure water. These are the two ways that we take care of guilty consciences after we have accepted the message of salvation. Amen. That is how spiritual mm. water is. And that's how intentional the Lord is concerning us being um, hydrated and not living a dry life, even in the physical. You realize that when you take a good shower, you, you feel refreshed. The refreshing comes because of the spiritual content of the water, not just because the water was so warm or was so cold. No. Amen. 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 Now we've talked about the dwelling places of um, the enemy. Let's talk about the dwelling places of the, or the dwelling place of our God. Now we're talking about the content and the atmosphere of the dwelling place of God. We have seen the contents and the atmosphere of the dwelling place of demons dry. And we have talked about a few aspects. Now, Psalm 36 verse 9, it says, talking about the Lord, for with you is the fountain of life. In other words, for with you is a spring of life. In your light, we see light. With God is the fountain of life, the spring of life. That's what is with him. How is it with him? It's with him in the form of water. Amen. It is Amen. with the form of water. It is with him in the form of the blood. You realize that the blood and the water work together. They go together. It is for the same reason. Let me go ahead of myself and come back. It is for the same reason why when Jesus Christ's side was pierced, blood and water came out. Amen. Amen. Blood and water came out. For with God is the spring of life. With him is the blood. Two sources of water, of, of life. Amen. We know that in the physical, we cannot survive without blood. And we cannot survive without water. It's spiritual, not just a physical thing. Amen. Before science, amen. Before science, amen. spirit. So everything we are seeing around us came from the spirit. Now with him is a fountain of life. In his light, we see light. Now in John 7, 37 to 39, let's buttress that point even more. It says, talks about the promise of the Holy Spirit. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Why? Because with him is the fountain of life. Of, of is a fountain of life, which is a spring of life. Amen. So if anyone mm. has, let him come to him and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, that is what New King James says, but the real word there is that out of his belly, is the word koilia, out of his belly, will flow rivers of living water. Because you, we will come to him and drink, amen, and then out of the belly that consumes the water will now flow rivers of living water. How will it flow? It will flow in the form of the spirit. Here's one thing I want to leave with us as well. Before ministering, if you're not on a dry fast, drink water before ministering with understanding. Drink water with understanding before ministering. Amen. Amen. Oh, concerning the spirit whom those believing in him will receive for the Holy Spirit was not given was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified do we see that Holy Spirit had not yet been given but he says come to me and drink and out of your belly will flow but the Holy Spirit had not yet been given amen amen that's powerful 
Yes, it is. Now, content and atmosphere of the dwelling place of God. The second point, Acts 7 verse 49. It says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? What did we see about heaven yesterday? Shemaim, fiery waters, and that is where the Lord dwells. The Lord loves water. And then we read in Revelation 22 verse 1 that the angel of the Lord showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. This water is flowing from the throne of God and we are being told that heaven is his throne. And what is flowing from there? Water. That is where he dwells. That's the content and the atmosphere of the dwelling place of God. Amen. We cannot afford to live dry, chapped, deserted lifestyles. Amen. Amen. The third point, Psalm 29 verse 10. Look at this. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. That's where he's enthroned, where there is a flood. Water. And the Lord sits as king forever. Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens, Shemaim, and the earth. Amen. The Lord Amen. sat enthroned at the flood. We're looking at the content and the atmosphere of the dwelling place of God. Now, the dwelling place of God contains water. Now, the question you want to ask yourself is, what is the content and the your the content and atmosphere of your dwelling place, physically and spiritually? May this come as a way of deliverance for those who prefer carbonated drinks over pure water, to see how the enemy is cheating us. Amen. Amen. Because when um, health specialists tell us to drink more water, we think they're just being health conscious. But little do we know that that's the Lord using them to tell us that it's important that we stay with the natural source that he gave us from the very beginning, the natural and blessed source that he made available to us from the very beginning. So the dwelling place of God contains water. Therefore, God likes water or watery fluid environments. Why? Water is the only element, like we said yesterday, that existed before God spoke anything into being. Creation came out of water. It's for that reason that our bodies are at least 70% water. Amen. It's very spiritual. Amen. Very. 70% of our body is water. We cannot go without water for more than three days. I'm sure we know that because at that point, we're close to death. Very close enough. Water is what holds the earth. When I talk about earth here, I'm talking about our bodies, you and I. Water is what holds the earth, you and I, together. Void of water, our body parts, our systems will not function. Water is that one element that connects the different functioning as parts of our bodies. But we can go without food for 21 days. But we cannot go without water for, for three days because we'll be very, very close to death, as a matter of fact, die. Because our bodies will now start producing alcohol, which is dangerous for our bodies to maintain. Okay, moving on. So why do you think God likes water so much? Anybody wants to give it a try? Why do we think our father likes water so much water is life amen amen mm -hmm. for with him is a fountain of life amen. amen now thank you let's continue according to the law of first mention we are told that the spirit was relaxing over the waters amen, amen. the spirit of god was relaxing over the waters that 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 tells us from the very beginning that God 
loves water. He loves associating. He feels comfortable in, in fluid, in watery environments. Now, but for what reasons, even more to add to what Sister has said, water is a means by which God transmits his voice from the heaven to the earth. That's one of the, another reason. Water is a means by which God transmits his voice from the heaven to the earth. Psalm 29, verse 3 to 4, it says, The voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Do we see that? He communicates to us through water. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. So every time we interact with water, ask yourself, what is the Lord saying? Is it same, for the same reason? Let me just give us simple examples. It's for the same reason that people will say when I'm taking a shower, the Lord speaks to me often, or I hear the voice of God. Because the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Amen. Amen. He's communicating through water. I don't know if anybody can stand hearing God directly. I mean, our eardrums will pop. So he has to find a good medium to, come, to go through. Amen. Amen. To, to through water. Revelations 14 verse 2. It says, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Another one says, as a sound of many waters. I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and as a voice of the great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons um, that the Lord loves water is because it's a safe medium through which he can communicate um, to us. It's a safe medium, and uh, in, I'll say this in air quotes, that it's a, it's a common medium. Water is common to everybody. Amen. Amen. If you can't get it through a tap, you can get it through rain. You can get it through the dew. Now, we are speaking about water because it's the content of the dew. Amen. I want us to see mm. the significance because we are going somewhere with this. Amen. 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 But the Lord would have said that I can only speak to you through an element that is rare to gain access to. Then in other words, he's saying I'm depriving some people from gaining access to me or from hearing me. But water, who lives without water? Nobody. So if everybody who is alive could just connect to the understanding of water, then we'll all be hearing God quickly and effortlessly. So nobody in this world as of now has been deprived of the voice of God. Nobody. Because he's speaking to us through the waters. Amen. Amen. Okay. We established yesterday that the water from heaven is the same as the water here on the earth. So as we speak about this, our prophetic acts, we are reinforcing what we said yesterday and adding to it today. Now, whenever you and I drink water, may we purposefully remind ourselves that the spirit is relaxing on the waters that we, on the water that we are drinking. Therefore, we are drinking God himself. He says, come to me, those of you who are thirsty, and I'll give you water to drink. And out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. So when we drink water, we are drinking him, and then we release him when we speak. Let's consciously and purposefully remind ourselves that the Lord is speaking to us through water. So may we be keen to hear him and understand what he's communicating to us through that medium. Amen. Amen. 
Now, whenever we shower with pure water, as we saw in Hebrews 10, 13, may we be purposeful to remind ourselves that the spirit is relaxing upon the waters. So as much as we consume the water, when we shower with the water, it comes upon us. So we carry God in us and on us just by virtue of activating, understanding the power in water. We carry him in us and on us. And may we be reminded that he's speaking to us and may we be keen to hear him. And by all means, avoid any form of dehydration. It's not godly to go and take IV fluids because you're trying to hydrate yourself. It's not even pure water. Amen. Amen. Never glory in that. It's a, the enemy cheating you from the source of life and the voice of God. So taking showers frequently is a spiritual action. Therefore, shower often. It's a prophetic act. Shower. Amen. Amen. So here we said we said that we had read this before. Um John 7, 37 to 39. Now I'm reading from the NIV. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this, he meant the spirit will flow from within them. The actual translation is that will, will flow from their bellies. Amen. And by this, he meant the spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to, to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Amen. Amen. Okay. So here we go. John 19, 34. May we have our communion elements ready. We are told. We are told in verse 34 that, but one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Amen? Blood Amen. and water. Blood and water. When next you and I use water to partake in communion, may we not see it as mere water. Amen? Amen. We discern water or the water as that which came from the side of Jesus. You see, everything that came out of Jesus was wrapped in some spirituality. It was wrapped in some, some spirituality. Amen. So may we have our elements ready as we prepare to partake together. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe partake, maybe take of a bright break and partake. Let me take of our cup. If it's water you have, that's good. If it's grape juice, that's equally good. That's my thing. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Blood and water. Amen. Only blood would have come out, but water also came out because blood cannot function without water. They work together. That is why blood and water are necessary for our guilty consciences. Amen. Amen. So to remind ourselves of the prophetic action, shower with consciousness, drink 
with consciousness and remind yourselves that through this medium, the Lord is speaking. Through this medium, he's speaking to us. And let's be keen, let's be attentive to hear. He has always been speaking through this medium. But because we may not have had the consciousness prior, then we're not receiving from him. So this time around, do it with consciousness. Listen to him. Hear him speak to you. There should never be a day where you say that I, I don't know how to hear the voice of God. What is the medium? Through what? Uh, we hear the sound of God, the sound of many waters. Amen. Share Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the worship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell also forever and ever. Amen. 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 Have a productive day in Jesus' name and see you tomorrow, same time. Amen. Amen. Me and you too. Thanks. Thank you.